Hello everyone, my name is Jennifer State, this is Coloring Bliss, and today I'm going to share with you a huge mistake that I made on this mandala. Can you see it? Can you find the mistake? You're going to see it here in just a minute. I think it turned out beautiful in the end. I didn't give up, and I'm going to talk about that a little bit, about the theory of not giving up when you make a mistake. But also, during this video, I'm going to show you four, four different ways that you can use your Ink Tense Derwent pencils. So if you're interested in that, then let's sit back and enjoy past Jennifer as she gets through her huge mistake. Now before we get too far into this mandala, I wanted to remind everyone that we have a huge giveaway going on. It's worth over $200 and we're giving away the full set which includes the new 2023 pencils. So you're going to get the full 100 pencil set of Derwent Inktense pencils. So exciting that I get to give this away to one of you and included with the giveaway we are adding in our new book to help you organize your pencils and get them into those light mediums and darks and help you find beautiful color schemes to use with your brand new intense pencils. So follow the link in the video description to find where you can go and enter. There's lots of different ways to enter and this is going on in December 2023. The contest ends on December 24 and the winner will be announced on Christmas Day, December 25th. Now remember, don't get scammed. We never ask for money for our giveaways. So if you get contacted by someone who looks like Coloring Bliss but they're asking you for money for your giveaway, that is a scam and do not listen to them. We will not announce the winner before December 25th and it will be via email and we will not ask for any money the winner gets all their beautiful prizes without having to give us a single penny good luck everyone and I hope you win <laughs> here is a mandala that I've been working on for several hours already I hand drew the mandala did all the lettering really excited about it I colored the orange the idea here is to fill it in with the new ink tense tritones which is a light medium and dark for every color on the color wheel and uh, we choose that and put it into our system for you so that you can um, easily find a light medium and dark for every color and it's featured in our new book and the great thing about this new book is it has all 100 colors of the Ink Tense line. So the brand new pencils that were released in 2023 are in this new book. And we've integrated them into the swatch pages and into our tritones or the light mediums and darks. So this is a fantastic resource if you are collecting Ink Tense pencils and you want a way to help you pick color schemes, then I highly recommend you come check out this book. It's available as a digital download as well as a printable format that comes on some beautiful watercolor paper so that you can um, experiment with the water soluble properties of these beautiful ink tense pencils by Derwent. Now just a little heads up, I want to let you know that we are not sponsored by Derwent. We purchased all these ink tense pencils on our own and because we love them so much we have created these resource books to go along with them and help you out as an artist and colorist that uses Derwent ink tense pencils. So let's talk about what went wrong here. Um, I wasn't feeling really good yesterday but I was feeling really proud of how this mandala turned out. I colored in the orange section with the light medium and dark and then I do a blend of all three pencils here at the end of each little wedge. Really excited about it. I moved on. I was going to work on red violet and I grabbed the three red violet pencils and I started doing the colors here in the violet section instead of the red violet section that I was supposed to do. Then I moved on to start working on the blue violet pencils and that's when I discovered my big mistake. And I was so disheartened. I I turned off all the lights and walked away immediately when I made this mistake and I was ready to just tear this thing up and throw it away. I was so 
discouraged. So how do you come back from a big mistake like this after putting hours into it, feeling good about it, feeling proud of yourself for working hard even though you weren't feeling well? How do you come back from a mistake? And I'm sure a lot of you can relate to having made a mistake like this in a coloring page or a piece of artwork. Um, comment below about any of your heartbreaking mistakes that you have made so that I don't feel alone and all of us can relate to each other and see that this is a normal thing to have a mistake like this happen. So my first recommendation when a mistake like this happens is to walk away. You're feeling emotional, you're feeling frustrated and discouraged and disappointed. And to sit there and tear up your piece of art or just give up and be angry is not going to give you any creative bliss. It's just going to make you even more angry. So getting up, taking a break was the best thing I could do. I went and had dinner, a good night's sleep, and during that time I was pondering whether I should just throw this whole thing away or try to um, fix the mistake. My first thought was maybe I could just recolor the red violet here and color on top of the ink tense pencils here. I can't lift this. I am working on watercolor paper so um, that's my other thought I had was maybe I could lift the error off but these are ink tense pencils. Derwent ink tense pencils are permanent once they've been activated by water. They're not a typical watercolor product. They're an actual ink that is in a pencil form and then is activated by using a little bit of water. So this will not lift, especially these areas right here where I used it very wet, that's not going to lift. And this is a very deep dark color. It, to try to erase it would just ruin the paper and ruin the whole project anyway. So my next thought was I could um, cover it and I think that's what we're going to do. So I've been pondering how to go about that. We're on a nice big piece of watercolor paper here and it needs to be watercolor paper that goes over it. I can't just use a piece of um, copy paper or something and stick it over it. You'll see here I found a little scratch piece of lined paper here that's very thin and you can see you can see straight through it so this is the paper I'm going to use to create a template and then we're going to cut this wedge out of watercolor paper and hopefully glue it on in a perfect format a perfect way so it is barely noticeable that the mistake happened so step one is to create the template so I'm going to slide it right up next so that the edge is right on my illustration line. Now if you've ever wanted to draw your own mandalas, your own color wheels, um, I love drawing mandalas and there are a couple videos here on my channel where I, sorry I have to concentrate where I teach you how to draw your own mandalas. Um, you start out usually with smaller mandalas, that's a great way to do it. And I even have a downloadable tool that you can come and get from my website um, where I make it so that it's really easy for you to trace and create your own mandala. So I recommend that. Okay, that's the general shape. I used my Micron PN pen for that. I used this pen for all of the illustration lines on this mandala. I love the PN. What it means is it has a plastic nib rather than a felt nib. And it works so great for me because I have a little bit of a heavy hand when it comes to lining with a pen like this. And so instead of destroying the beautiful nibs on the Micron pens, the plastic nib is my best friend. Okay, so we have our little template, and now we need to cut it out of the same watercolor paper. And this is the watercolor paper that I used. It's by Canson, and it is a big piece of paper. There are 30 sheets in here and 11 by 15. This is a great student grade watercolor paper. It's not the best watercolor paper if you want to do a lot of dramatic watercolor effects, 
but if you're using um, a medium like I am, which are these pencils, and I'm not trying to get a lot of gradients and, and, and magical watercolor effects, then this budget-friendly paper is really great, and I love the big size of it so that I can display my mandala when it's finished on my back wall for filming and just for my own delight. So, we're going to grab a piece of this paper. Actually, instead of grabbing a piece, let's just cut it out. Uh, it's going to be easier to get a good cut if I just remove a whole piece of paper. So I'm grateful I made this mistake on this more budget-friendly paper. If I had made this mistake on, say, my Arches watercolor paper, that would have been even more heartbreaking because it's such expensive paper. So this is um, my best um, my best scenario for making a mistake is being on this paper. Okay, now we need to um, get this to go on to. I'm trying to think how to transfer this. If we clip it on. Then I can cut it out. I'm going to grab my best paper scissors that I have and a clip or two here to get this to stay really still while we're working. Because I don't want to waste this paper if I can help it. Okay, hopefully these won't be in the way. If they are, we'll just move them. These are my little um, paper shears by Tim Holtz, the tonic line. I really like these scissors. They're super scary sharp, but that makes um, cutting things like this really easy. Okay. There's our piece, and of course I'm going to just take this big piece of paper and put it back in the pad because I can just cut this off and still use it for another art project in the future. Alright, let's see how we did, if we need to do it again or did we do a good job on the first try. I think we did pretty good. This little edge right here is a little rough with our cut, I can see. Okay, now we want this paper to act and react the same as the rest of the paper, so I'm making sure that I'm keeping the textured side up. This is a little bit rougher. That's the side I've been working on, so let's just make sure we keep it nice and lined up. I'm going to double, triple check that this is going to sit on here the way I want it to. Very good. I think that's going to be great. Okay, so let's adhere it to the mandala. I'm going to use a couple different things here to get this to stick. I'm going to use some tape. This is a tape runner by Tombow. We're working on the back now. Okay, just a little bit of tape to start. Because I, I'm gonna use this, this is a photo um, glue stick, so it's acid free. Cl it dries clear, but it's not a super strong adhesive. I've had this, um, had problems with this glue stick in the past, but I like that it's acid free and that it dries clear. I'm gonna just put a ton on, like that. Line it up and glue her down. Okay, we are glued down. The mistake is gone. 
but we're not done yet fixing this problem. I need to take my Micron PN and put the illustration lines back in and the little circles. For the circles, I used my template that I've shown here before, this little um, circle drawing device by the brand Helix. Um, I'll put a link to this little device as well um, in the description of the video in case you want this. This is one of my favorite tools for drawing a mandala and getting the right angle lines. I had to do 30 degree lines. So it was 0, 30, 60, 90, like that all the way around. And that's how I built my 12 section mandala for our color wheel. And then I used the 3 8 hole to create the little dots in the middle here for each color because I wanted to show that there are lots of different ways to use these pencils and you get different strengths of there we are you get different strengths of color depending on how you apply the Derwent Ink Tense pencil. So I'll show you that here in a minute. And just gonna freehand this little arch. Good. Okay, I'll be back once I get all the lines drawn down and then we'll color one of these wedges together and I'll show you all the different ways, well not all, but a bunch of different ways that you can use the Derwent Ink Tense pencils. Okay, can you tell which one I messed up on if I spin it? Does your eyes just um, fade in and, and not notice it? Mine are doing it. I had a hard time on the edges where the edge of the thick watercolor paper needed a black line, but I think it's going to be okay. Once this is full of color, my hope is that the eyes of the viewer will go to the colors and the repeating patterns rather than looking for tiny little mistakes in the line art. That's usually what happens with mandalas, and that's one of the reasons I love mandalas, is because of that trick that our eyes play with us on when we are viewing them. Okay, another thing that I did that was almost a mistake, I'm going to add silver details to this um, beautiful mandala, and for that I'm using the Pentel Dual Metallic Brush Pen. And you can buy them individually, or you can buy them in this big eight um, marker set. I did a whole video about these so I'll link that video in case you're interested. But it's a beautiful pen that makes adding details that shine and shimmer really easy. But it's not permanent when dry. It can be activated by water. And so I started doing the little detail here with the pen and realized I better not because it will just activate as I'm coloring down and wetting all of these beautiful different wedges. So that was a near mistake that I think I'll be able to avoid um, a problem with because I stopped soon enough. I think I'm going to be doing all of these little um, droplet type or leaf shapes up here in the silver as well. I think it'll be a good complement to all the beautiful colors. Add a little bling but not distract from um, the main attraction which is the light, medium and dark of every color on this color wheel all being done in ink tents. Okay, so this is where I left off. I was using the three pencils that we chose for the light, medium, and dark for blue-violet. And let me make sure I've got the right ones. I don't want to make a mistake again. We need 810, 820, and 1100. 810 is our light, 820 is our mid-tone, and 1100 is our dark color. So that's the three colors, and what I did was I colored in the center here with the lightest color, and then I added on um, the corners of each of the 
little um, half circle, I did a little bit of the mid-tone and then the dark tone in the center. So this is a dry color and then I mean meaning that I used the pencils dry to color this and now I'm going to use a little bit of water and a paintbrush. This is a number six round by Princeton, this paintbrush. It's a good little paintbrush and I'm primarily going to activate the center with a little bit of the edges like this and get a beautiful color going so you can see what all three of those pencils together can do and it will lighten a little bit as it dries. Now this um, section here on the wedge is the light color so let's double check again the 810 is the light. It's part of the problem with the ink tense pencils is that um, they don't have very many light colors um, because they're all very intense and you can lighten them by adding more water. Okay, so I took my wet brush, touched the tip of the pencil to get some color, and now we're going to color in with brush this whole wedge and it's okay if you go out of the lines a little bit because we're going for a little bit of a watercolor type look and watercolor looks really pretty when it's not perfect. Now this is another way you can use the ink tense pencils that's getting the paper pre-wet and then coloring with the tip of your pencil straight into that wet area and you get a really deep version. So that's the same pencil done two different ways. You can have it really light or you can have a really deep version. So that's the three main ways I'm using the pencil. Um, on this mandala. One is dry up here on the half circle. Two is using it like a paint where you use a brush and you pick up color and paint it down. And three, I'm using it directly into wet paper so you get the most intense ink payoff possible. Okay, let's do the mid-tone now the same way which is number 820. Make sure I have the right one. I don't want to make another mistake. So I'm going to be double and triple checking myself and I guess that's my next piece of advice is to be kind to yourself when you make a mistake. Everyone makes mistakes. Um, what happens is the more you do art, the more you practice with your tools, the more experience you get, the more you realize everybody is always, well not always, but often making mistakes and the difference is that professional artists or very experienced artists, they have tricks and ideas on how to get themselves out of a mistake. And that really comes in handy. And so if you can take a break, walk away from the mistake and let yourself stop feeling super angry, then when you come back, hopefully you can start using your, your um, knowledge of your art tool and be able to correct the issue without too much trouble, which I'm pretty proud of myself that we were able to fix this little wedge right here. And I can't wait to see this whole mandala pulled together. And there is one section on this mandala that I'm not sure what I'm going to do with it yet. I might just leave it white and that's this center right here. So I'll have to think about that and decide later what I'm going to do with that area. All right, now it's just time to repeat and that's probably the most relaxing and the most tedious part of a mandala is once you've made your decisions, you just repeat it all the way around the mandala. But we need to not put ourselves on cruise control too much so we don't make a mistake like we did last time on our violet wedge. Speaking of violet, let's do that color next.
Alright, one problem I've run into is the new pencils came with a barcode label on the end and it makes it just too wide for my electric sharpener. I'm using the Exacto School Pro and it works so good on the Derwent pencils because they're just a little bit chunkier than like say a Prismacolor pencil but because of this barcode they put on here it is making it near it so that I can't use that sharpener so every time I bring up a new pencil I'm having to remove that sticker so that it can work well in my sharpener let me sharpen that up and it's ready to go The next color I think I'm going to do is green and the reason I'm jumping around the color wheel is not just to make it more difficult on myself which it is but it's so that the colors in each wedge won't um, bleed to the next wedge so the red wedge right now is nice and wet because we just finished it and you can see right here that the um, darkest red has bled up and into the mid-tone red a little bit this doesn't bother me. I kind of think it looks pretty to have the wedges um, flowing a little bit with each other, but I don't want the red flowing into the red-orange. So I want to give this wedge a lot of time to set and dry so that we don't have too much bleed over between wedges. So I'm going to move over to green because it's got nothing wet next to it, and then I can come back over here or here. It just depends on what I'm feeling like. So let's do green next. came up with the perfect thing to do in the center here and that's to color with the pencil just dry and not activate it with water so this way you get to see four different ways to use the ink tense pencils so let's review the four ways real quick one dry just like I'm coloring right now in this middle wedge two color it dry first and then activate it with water and that's what we've been doing in the little half circle all the way around at the end of each wedge. Three is to take your pencil get it wet with a paintbrush and then use that pigment that you just pulled off of the pencil to color and paint down color onto your paper. So that's number three using it like paint. And number four is using the pencil dry, dipping it into a wet surface, and that gives you an even more intense finish like we have right here in the center of these circles. Four different ways of using the Derwent Ink Tense pencils, all on one mandala. feeling really excited about how this is looking and I want to add the final details of our silver. So the silver is going to go in this rim right here around each of the half circles and in the leaves. I will just give it a nice framework and bring the whole thing together. 
And like I said before, I'm using the Dual Metallic Brush by Pentel, and it is a beautiful brush nib and such a shiny, beautiful finish. So I'll put a link to these pens for you in the video description and let's add some bling. See how that shine turned out. Ooh, pretty! See how the light catches those little bits of silver. Just gives it that oomph that I was hoping for. So cute. Now the cool thing about this mandala is I can put it any orientation I want, but I think as the artist I'm going to choose that I want it horizontal like this with yellow at the top. So I'm going to sign right down here my name and I'm also going to sign the date and the word ink tense ink tense 2023 and it is for me it's November the end of November okay there it is. I think I'm going to invite Steve to come over. The other thing I think I'm going to do is cut off some of this extra paper that is on the sides. can use that extra paper for bookmarks and other projects, but I think it'll look nice if it's trimmed up. So I'll do that later before I hang it up. So Steve, we want to come over and check out my final project. I'm so proud of myself that I didn't give up. In fact, I'm having a hard time even finding the mistake now. So I'm just so pleased <laughs> after being so discouraged and upset yesterday to turn it all around and have it look this fun makes me so happy and I love how it's showing the four different ways to use an intense pencil. There are more ways than that, not just four, but this really shows off four different ways to use those ink tense pencils. What do you think, Steve? Oh, that's nice. Do you like the bling I added? Yeah. So if the four different ways, one is dry without activating it with water. Here out in the little semicircles, it was dry with activating with water after you color out your blend. And then here on these rings is showing off how it looks when you use it like paint, a wet brush against the tip mm. of the pencil. And then inside each of the dots is how the pencil looks when you color straight into a wet paper. Oh, okay. So four different methods for using one type of pencil. Wow. I love the tritones. I highly recommend our tritone book so that you can have the light, medium, and dark colors of each of these beautiful colors on the ink tense color wheel. All right, before I sign off, I also want to remind you one more time about our huge giveaway. This is a prize package worth over $200. And we're giving away the beautiful Derwent ink tense full set, all 100 pencils and a book to accompany it so that you can get your pencils organized into color schemes and into the tritones that we worked so hard to create. So don't forget that that winner will be announced on December 25th via email. So you have until December 24th to get your entries in. We will not announce the winner before December 25th and don't get scammed. We will not ask you for a single penny. This prize will be 100% for you. We pay for shipping and the whole thing. Then good luck everyone. I hope you win. Um, like I said, links and everything that you need will be in the video description. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you enjoyed watching me fix my mistake. And just in case you did forget, this is the wedge right here where the mistake was. And I couldn't even see it. I, I have to feel the paper now to find <laughs> that mistake. Yeah, you can hardly tell. I'm so Good happy. Job. <laughs> Thanks again, everybody, for watching, and I hope you have a wonderful, colorful, blissful day. Bye bye.